Morning folks, um, enjoyed making the uh, Arab building the other week so I thought right with all these medievals for a break I need to make um, a small medieval peasant's house I think or peasant's hut or whatever you want to call it so got the measuring stick, a sharpish bladed knife, I might need to put a new blade in there and a basic ballpoint pen and 5mm foam core so I'm going to draw out uh, the peasant's hut, or the medieval building, let's call it that, and uh, get it cut out. Um, yeah, that's it. And I'll come back to you when I've done just that. So back in a tick. Right, so what I've done here is a couple of buildings marked out. Uh, I've gone for 40 mil high. And the doorway will be 35 mil, which will allow me to put um, a lintel over, and obviously um, wood um, up and down the sides. Um, for the ends, um, I've gone for a slightly different pitch. The normal way to do a pitch is to do a 45 degree angle, but I've just changed the pitch. Um, I know it's medieval buildings; they were just still messing around with pitch, so you can have different pitches. So we've got slightly different heights there, about 10 mil difference. Um, 40 mil high here and I think one's 45 and one's 50 or 55 um, that's how I've, if it shows yeah that's how I've drawn it out and then just I will cut those away um, the ends always want to go on the outside that gives you somewhere then to rest the roof if you're making a roof I tend to make my roofs uh, loose I don't glue them on but then I don't skirmish games so I could do but I always like the roofs being separate um, yep so that's what I'm gonna do so I'll cut these all up uh, mark out the doors mark out a window and I think then get them glued together I think that's the next stage um, yep yeah, so we've got two buildings one longer and one shorter um, there we go I'll get that sorted and then come back to you right that's the buildings all marked out uh, we have our wood glue and we have bucket loads of stirrers, wooden coffee stirrers. These came courtesy of uh, <coughs> somewhere. But there you go. Yeah, you can buy them as well. Um, I think I've got more than enough. So I'm going to be sticking these, uh, I want to say MDF, but I don't mean MDF to a foam core together. Uh, that was a bit weak there, so I'm going to just put a, a backer on it there. And then obviously a piece across the front. So I'm going to stick them together and cut and trim these um, yeah to give it that uh, that wood frame effect so I'm gonna get stuck in <laughs> pun intended and get that done so I'll come back to you when the buildings are glued together and I've got some wood bits and pieces on so back in a tick right um, we've done a bit of stuck in a bit of wood on there as you can see this is what I plan to do um, that's a slightly larger window. And we've got this side, a smaller window, a couple of doors on this. So uh, as we go, just move that one out of the way, and this one as well, marked out. But um, it's a, such a long time since I actually did one of these buildings. I thought, right, I maybe ought to uh, get on and just make sure I'm on the right wavelength. So. This, I finished the end and I finished the front there. The, uh, the door is just a push fit, it's loose. The window's there and the painted. Just used a stick and pushed it down through that to give a, the uh, a window grill, I suppose you call it, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's finished. Um, so I've cut away the paper on the MDF to expose the wattle and I've just literally drawn pen lines that gives the effect of wattle which of course is um, a stick uh, you've got down sticks and cross sticks haven't you interwoven but uh, whenever I've made masters and this before that's how I've done the wattle I think it looks turns out okay um, basic sand and glue um, paste and uh, there's the wood. It's a bit heavy, the wood, for me, I think. it's. Um, but that's the size of these stirrers, so there's nothing I can really do about it. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm pleased with how it's turning out. It's it's as I wanted it to look. Um, so I'll now get on and do the rest um, of these house carcasses, and then once they're done, then I'll sort out the uh, the uh, roof. I think I'm going for thatch on these uh, rather than slate, so uh, I shall need to go and cull a teddy bear. Uh, I think I've got some fur somewhere, so that's what I'll be doing. Right, okay, I'll get on. Uh, back to you when there's some progress. Okay, progress of sorts. All the buildings are um, wooded up, wooded up, oh, yes. <laughs> We've all had the wood fitted with the wood frame and I've cut out all the uh, wattle from the foam core which is just a case of, as you can probably see there, cutting the paper, the paper liner and just peeling it back. Um, it's a bit of a pain this one, it doesn't peel up easy but it's, it's easy enough with a sharp scalpel. Um, I put a new blade on so it was, it was better than last time. Yep, so that's the bigger one, that's all ready. Um, all the... Uh, Exposed wattle where I want to at that end, quite a lot at that end, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. And then this one's finished as well. And obviously, that was the piece I showed you last time that I'd finished, so I've now finished the other piece or the other half of the building. Okay, both are done, so it is now sand and glue and paste and all the rest. Get that done everywhere, and then I'll get that painted up so we're ready for the roof. Um, I'll get on with that, come back to you when I'm sorted. Um, right, there we go. Sand and glue is all added. Or glue and then sand would be a better way to do it, wouldn't it? So that was the finished item. Now then the other side, as you can see, hopefully you can see, and this is the larger building with the two doors. Same again, glue and then dipped in sand, same sand as I actually used for basing the figures. So all done, next job is get the paint on, so I'll paint now using a sandy coloured paint, um, back in a tick. Right there we go, finitoed, two building carcasses, cut out, sand and glued, painted, dry brushed and ready for the roofs. Obviously they're not finished in the true aspect because they've got the roofs on and I'm going to base them onto a baseboard. Uh, the doors are just push-in doors because I should be sort of gluing them probably um, half open so they just loosely push in and it's falling out. <laughs> uh, so that's a small one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that's the side I did the other day. And that end, and I've just done this, so easy enough to match up, it's not, not difficult, same shades. And we can see the exposed wattle where the, uh, the door was fallen away. Makes it look uh, rather fetching, I think, to me. <laughs> and there we go, that's that one. And, yeah. and there we go there. As you can see, um, that door's going to fall out anyway. Yeah. Oh, I've just noticed I've got to paint the window bar there. I've done the, I've done the set of three, you know, been painted. You can see those three windows, but I haven't done the one at the back, so I'm just going to put some paint on that. Um, all right, yeah, so next job is uh, cut out the roofs and uh, find the teddy bear fur wherever that's gone, hidden at the moment. Right, okay, I'll go get on. All right, there we go. Roofs are all cut. Uh, lift off roof, basic style. Uh, just put uh, foam core joiners, angles, and that will sit on like that. This one, uh, uh, all sorted exactly the same. Um, I haven't sealed the top. The reason I sealed this because the wood was just too short. So as you can probably see there, but I thought, yeah, piece of paper over the top. Right, teddy bear fur. I'll just grab that and as you can see it's a blue teddy bear it's the only one I could catch in the wild the blue ones so we've caught one and skinned it and that's what we've got <laughs> can't believe these shops they've got red or blue I think there was a green 
Oh no, wait, that was it. Oh my goodness. You'd think they'd have sort of teddy bear fur colours. Sandy, goldeny browns, and pale browns, and no, no. Red, blue, and white. So I thought, right, blue is a darker colour. Um, so I'll cut this to size. And uh, what I used to do is cut a piece. I'll just take a roof off here. I'll cut a piece and stick it on one side. Um, sh um, just short, just over a bit. Yeah, just hanging over. Then when I put the other side on, I can lap it over. And you'll see anyway when I get it done. So um, I think that's the next job. Cut the fur to uh, fit the roof. So back in a tick. Right, what we've got there is a lump of blue. <laughs> blue fur. Uh, I'll just show you what I've done there. I've decided to actually put it on in one lump. I'll just pull back a bit, yeah. So, and I've combed it. What I've used is one of these. I use one of these uh, pet combs. Got a couple of pound, I think, or a pound from one of the cheap shops. Um, and you've got different, it's metal. So it'll really rake through this fur fabric. So what we've got is the basic, oh, if you can pull back a bit. We've got the basic, I've uh, just glued it on. As you can see, it's all glued white glue there, letting it dry a couple of hours probably, perhaps even less and then I should trim it to size um, and then we start with the PVA that's the way I do it anyway um, water down PVA and comb it and rake it and whatever else, but I'll, I'll show you that when I get it, so one lump and I've uh, combed it out, so it's a lovely shade of blue at the moment, right I'll get the smaller one done and then I'll come back to you well, there we go, finished off. Um, not sure if I like them, it's ages since I've done thatch roofs. I normally do slate roofs or wood roofs. I think it's probably 10, 15 years. And I'll be honest, I basically forgot a lot of what I should do. But it, they've worked out okay. Um, cut the teddy bear fur, folded under the folded it under the edges. And then what I do is I just trim it along here. I think I might trim it back some more it gives you an idea of what it looks like so it's a bit low for me so I'm thinking I may trim it back a bit more but uh, I mean it's okay it's just meant to be a rough there we go a rough thatch as you can see there the edges and there and then we got a back there but it'll be okay as I say these are going to be base but that's done for now um, I put a figure there just to give you an idea of the size I don't think they look too bad, too out of proportion. Um, oops, sorry, there's the camera. But yeah, old finito. Um, the colours, I've gone for a sort of more of a newer thatch um, and rough looking because it's supposed to be just a peasant type thatch. Um, as I say, these are going to be based um, probably single bases or on a base something like that possibly in an L shaped configuration but I'll see when I get around to doing the basing anyway there we go just me playing around with some medieval peasanty village huts buildings etc etc anyway thanks for looking and uh, bye for now